Well, have I screwed up the kid's razor 170 to the point where I can't fix it, get it back together and get it running? I guess we're going to find out. So we're going to start working on the kids razor 170 today hopefully be able to get it back together and get it running here so when nice weather comes they can enjoy this again if you guys don't remember we started to throw zippy's motor in here and then changed plans and now this is just sat so the biggest question i have is i'm going to be able to put everything back to how it was to put the motor back in here and get it running again now hopefully it'll just pop right off with a little persuasion. And if you don't remember, which you probably don't because it's been a while, the whole reason this started is because the transmission in the Razor 170 went kaputs. You can see it's still apart in pieces. You can see here we've broke off gear teeth. This gear here is all chewed apart and it's nasty. And at the time, it was super, super expensive to get all the parts that we needed to fix this. So that's why I thought I'd put Zippy's motor in here. Even though it didn't pan out, it was probably still a good idea. However, now I've got all the parts either here or come in to put this transmission back together so it can be used once again. So yeah, probably a lot of wasted effort. Now this work here isn't the big deal. What the big deal is all these pieces sitting here that were the brackets and mounting brackets for not only the engine but various electronics, which I have cut off of everywhere. I have ordered a big steel plate there to the bottom for engine mounting. That's going to have to come off of there. So the tricky part is going to be remembering where all this stuff goes and getting it, welding it back in place so that it's sturdy and can hold everything again. All right, well, I figured out where each of, of my main motor mounts go, at least the spot they were originally. However, because I went all Conan the Barbarian, and took a cutoff wheel and just hacked away at those to get them out of there. If I just go and load them on right now, they are guaranteed not going to line up. So we're going to have to switch gears here and I'm going to have to just move over here to the transmission on the engine and get it all rebuilt so then I can actually bolt the mounts to the engine and set the engine in there, get it positioned, and then I'll have to tack the mounts, remove the engine, and then weld them up. So that's what I get for having a brainy idea of throwing a different motor in that just to turn around and not do that so i've got my new bearings and stuff here for in the transmission we'll have to pull the bearings put the new bearings out and this is the stuff i forgot to to get one of the most crucial gears i could have got that and you can see how much play is on this output ring gear i mean it's it's chewed up pretty good and i forgot to order that stuff so it's ordered, it's coming. In the meantime, we can replace our bearings in here and reassemble what we can, I guess. Yeah, we'll just give her a little taparoo. Wow, that was almost too easy. Ooh, this one might be a touch too small to grab. Let's see if it'll spread. Oh, wait, nope, nope, we got her. We got her. Let's hope this one pops out as good as the last one. I haven't jinxed myself. And... 
Wait for it. Oh. Uh huh. Uh huh. I may have jinxed myself. This guy's just a hair too big, I think, to fit in there. Oh man, it's close. It's close. Oh, it fits. I think. Oh yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now I'm hopeful. I think we're good or now. This is a much nicer fit. Oh yeah, that's gonna be a tight fit. <laughs> Take that, you bearing. Okay. One to go. Now the last one in there actually is made to be pulled in that direction and not the direction we've been. However, I'm going to use my puller as a driver and see if we can't use it in reverse to drive that bearing out by setting that there and hitting it this way. So not only a bearing puller, but a bearing driver as well. All right, now I just gotta take some time and get all this cleaned up. Get the inside of this all cleaned up. And then we'll be ready to put the new bearings in and start putting stuff back together. All right, my new parts got here to replace these old worn out ones. And I'm glad I ended up replacing this because you can see here how this gear is not wanting to slide the whole way down on that anymore. And I didn't know, I thought, well, maybe it's not made to. But uh, now that I got the new one, whoops, wrong way. No, it, it needs a slide clear down and there's a spacer in there. So. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna get this transmission put back together and get our body mounts bolted onto this motor and then we can set the motor in place and hopefully get in there to tack them body mounts on and then weld them back home again. So that's the plan. Okay, got a new oil seal for where our gear shift or gear selector goes. We're gonna oil that up so it slides in place nice. And just push that in there. Make sure she's seated. Beautiful. Now I gotta remember how all this goes back together. Okay, that's an old part we don't need. Oh, I need to see how this gear, which way this gear goes. I don't know if you guys will be able to tell this, but we have a raised side here where the bottom side's kind of flush with the bottom of the gears. This side is raised up, and I'm thinking this side is up. But I'm gonna go look in the service manual since I have it and check for sure. Okay, this is gonna be a tricky part. This is our ring gear through there. And then I gotta flip it. Get this gear in place. And then, oh, it falls back out on me. Get this little spacer and then a snap ring. I don't know if I have any snap ring pliers. Mine are all at work. Uh-oh, we might not be able to finish this today, Tori. That's a bummer. I might have some that'll work. That in there, and then a new snap ring. All right, now comes the tricky part. Getting the snap ring in there, actually. That wasn't tricky at all. Make sure it's seated in the groove, which we seem to be. All right. All right, so the service manual was no help whatsoever, but I'm pretty sure when I took this out and this old one is here that the broken tooth was out this way. So that's all I'm gonna put it back together with the new. So we will put this in here like that and install a new snap ring. Huh, that doesn't fit. It's too big. 
That's not cool. That's the one it said it was. Partzella, you lied to me. Go four, five, three, seven, seven, nine. Yep, there it is. As you can see, we need Sir Clip 21. Sir Clip 21 is four, five, three, seven, seven, nine. This was four, five, three, seven, seven, nine. Partzilla, you're wrong. That's not the correct one. Hopefully I have one that's gonna work because I'm not gonna wait for one to be ordered. Or I should say, Torin's not gonna let me wait for one to order and get here, are you? No. No. All right, we're in luck. I think I got one that's gonna work. Let's hope, huh, Tor? Oh, but my pliers don't fit in it because it's a smaller end. Another one good I brought over. Did it fall? I think this one's too big. Yep, that one's too big. So it's gotta be this one, but my ends are too big. Harbor Freight for the win! Let's get this motor back together now. Well, transmission back together now. Alright, so with that together, now we've got to work on tearing this guy apart and replacing this shaft here because these teeth are completely shot the rest of it seems okay so we did a little washer so that's what we're going to work on hey we didn't lose it boop boop I'll lay this stuff right out here in order Washer. That. Another C clip. The biggest is probably all the Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, with the old needle bearings and stuff, look good in that. So we'll leave that alone. We've got our new shaft. We will Alright, I put a new snap ring on that too instead of reusing this worn out C-clip. I don't think it shouldn't interfere with anything. It's the same thickness and should not interfere with this at all. Nope. Okay. That there. Get this little seat clip back on. We're going to put this in a vise to hold it, just to hold it. Clip, clip. All righty. Washer. And this guy goes in, goes in like that. So what we need to do with this guy is it's going to go in right there. We'll be connected to this guy. Right here. I'm going to have to put this guy in first. There we go. But before this goes on, this is what this new... That's where this new E-clip has got to go. Is on this guy. So we'll put it in there. Whoops. like so i got a new spring and a ball for it in here for registering i guess it's a pin <gasps> don't lose it so tiny 
this goes on the spring and then that whole thing goes in there and that pushing out on the plate there inside there is what tells you what gear you're in so now i'm going to, have to look in the book to see which way this shift fork goes i'll probably have to put these kind of in there together okay so there you show it with this side up take this back out we'll get this There it is. That in place. We're going to let him hang out here. Because now we got to install this in here loosely. This guy, I guess the one downfall to this is if I bend over too far, you can't see what's going on, can you? We want that to be in there enough so it'll hold this in place. All right, so this is going to go in there. This is going to come up and rotate and sit in there. Shaft is going to go in there. And then this in here in the neutral position like so we got one dot there one dot there one dot there on this side so that is our neutral position so you need to get this lined up so it stays at just enough tension on the detent ball to hold that in place right there and that is shall we say that i'm gonna throw the gasket on there and we should be able to bolt everything back up there there i'm going to just spritz this a little bit with fluid Oops, spill a bunch all over. Now, ooh, I want to oil that so that it doesn't stay in place. Okay, that's still good. So we had to carefully get that past here. like so all righty i'm gonna get this bolted up all right confession time seth came up uh and as you can see it's dark because we did a little uh trail i wouldn't not really trail riding but trail scouting for some new trails we want to make this year on the property for doing more reviews and stuff later on some more technical trails so we can really put stuff through its paces so i didn't get as much done on the razor 170 as i was wanting to but the transmission is all back together i was hoping to get it back together and at least get it in there and mounted we didn't get there but oh well that'll be on the next one we'll get this motor We'll bolt the uh, mounts fast to the motor, set it in place, hopefully be able to get those mounts tacked back in place, and then set it home. And once that's done, the rest of this ought to go back pretty quickly. There, I mean, there's not much to these razors. 170s, just a few body panels, wiring harness is super simple. So it ought to go pretty quick once the motor is back in place. So I know the kids are awful excited to get this guy up and running. I am too because I'm kind of excited to take this around the short course. I can't remember if we ever got a time with this around the long course or the high speed course. 
but I know we didn't get it down around the short course, so I'm kind of excited to get that done. But anyway, guys, we're just going to do it for this video. So um, thanks for watching, and until next time, God bless and keep on riding.